Hey, this is Jamie, and welcome to my third introductory lecture on simple linear regression. In this video, I want to take a second to explore the relationship between our estimated regression line and the different points that we've actually observed. You notice almost right away that very few of the points actually lie on that line. For almost any of those values, our prediction of what the travel time would be in hours is actually not equal to what the actual travel time was. In that difference between our estimated travel time and what it actually took the driver to make that delivery is called the error or the residual term. The residual is an important term because we can see in the least squares equation that ordinary least squares regression chooses the slope and the intercept of the line in order to get the line as close to all the points as possible. And how it determines that is by finding the difference between the predicted value of y, y hat sub i, and the actual value of y, y i, and then squaring it. So the least squares equation minimizes the sum between i equals 1 and i equals n which in this case n is 10, so it takes all 10 values of the residual term, which is the actual value of y minus our predicted value of y, and squares it. We can also look at that in terms of, rephrased in terms of the entire estimated regression equation, but simplest, I think, is down here in the bottom, where we just say that we're minimizing the sum of all of the squared errors where the error is just, again, that difference between our predicted value and our actual value. So let's explore this for a second. I've added three more columns to my table, one for my estimated or predicted value of y, another for the error, the difference between actual and expected, and then I'm going to square it. Then we're going to total these all up and take a look at three things that are true uh, for lines and estimates created using ordinary least squares regression. So first I'm going to calculate the predicted value of y. We did this earlier, but we can predict the amount of time it's going to take based on miles traveled. So our prediction is equal to the intercept plus the slope, I'm using absolute values on both of those, or absolute references, multiplied by the miles traveled, our x value, 8.1. So, for 100 miles traveled, the point on the regression line is, corresponds to a y value of 8.1 hours time traveled. For that first observation, the actual time traveled was 9.3 hours. You can see that point there is the uppermost dot, which means that we're off. We have a residual or an error that's equal to actual minus expected of 1.2. So we have an error of 1.2, which is suggests that we underestimated the actual value by 1.2 hours. And if we square that using shift 6 for the caret, the 2 to say that we're squaring, that's an exponent of 2, our squared error is 1.55. I'm going to drag this down. You can calculate it for each one, but that takes a while. And I just want you to notice a couple of things. The errors, some are positive and some are negative. But the squared errors, they are all positive because the square of a negative number is positive. And that's why we have to square this term in the least squares equation because if we sum up positive and negative numbers, we cancel ourselves out. So let's take a look at a few things that are true. We need to calculate some totals here. For each of these rows, I'm going to sum them up. So I'm going to sum up my travel time, and I'm going to compare it to my estimated travel time. And these two things are equal. That's the first truism that we're going to get here with our least squared equation, is that when estimated with ordinary least squares, the actual y value and the estimated y value, those are going to be equal. The second truism here is that the error 
is going to be zero. All the positive errors and the negative errors counteract each other. So when least squares regression has done its job, the sum of errors is zero. The third truism as the, is that this squared error that we're getting at a value of 8.0 is as low as it can possibly be for that data. If we change either of the coefficients, the slope or the intercept, we are going to raise the squared error. We can't get a better slope. So if we were to change this slope to 0 0.06 instead of 0 0.068, we're going to get a larger squared error. Similarly, if I change my intercept from 1.274 to 1.3, oops, I'm going to pick a different number because that didn't change it dramatically enough to change it to one decimal place. It's 1.5, we get a larger squared error. So this squared error is minimized for this data because of the ordinary least squared method. I'm hoping that you feel pretty good about what the error term is and how ordinary least squares plots that line such as to minimize the sum of the squared errors. Also, I hope that when you look at this chart, you can see what I mean by a residual, which is the difference between an actual observed value of y and what we would have predicted it to be. All right, those are the take homes. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Happy calculating.